Welcome back. So as I talked about before, the in-memory database is great for just testing our code. But the in-memory database is not so good if you want to kind of see the actualized code statement that's being created. And in this case, I want to show you guys what it's all about, what you're actually doing. The in-memory database also has some constraints and some references that's not working exactly like a real SQL database. So we kind of want to change this into an SQL database instead. And the one we're going to pick for now is SQL Lite. Now later there will be, we will switch to an Azure database and put this on live. So it's, it's not a big thing. Um, SQL Lite, what is that all about? SQL Lite is a self-contained, high reliable, embedded, full featured to public domain SQL database engine. SQL Lite is the most used database engine in the world. What? Why? Well, that's what you're using on your mobile. So that's one of the reasons that this guy is so huge. Now, actually we found a guide, I found a guide on the web, I will put that in the description, that explains how you'll actually um, get starting with Entity Framework Core in a .NET Core application. And you know what the cool thing is? They're using SQLite, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna use their setup right here to actually start working with SQLite. Now we need three packages. It only says two right here, but we need three different packages to start working with this. We need NG Framework Core, SQLite, NG Framework Core, Design, and one more thing. So let's just start by adding these packages. So jumping into my solution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click my infrastructure right here because that's my data area, right? I'll right-click that guy, I'll go to Manage NuGet Packages, and I get this view in Rider. Now you might have a different view in your setup. I covered this line right here, the Microsoft Entity Framework SQLite, whoopsies. Um, and I pretty much just copy this line right here and put it into the search box. Remember, if you're on the Visual Studio, you might have to click, click Browse or else you'll be in the current packages. But right here, they actually have set it up. So you have available uh, installed packages and the new packages down here. So it's uh, easy to, to check out. Now, I've put in SQLite and then I have these three packages and we're going to require them all. So I'm just going to add them all here. This guy, this guy. And of course, this guy. So I need these three SQL light packages to get going with setting up SQL. Now that was one area I need to add this. That was one project and that's the data project. But since I want a dependency inject, I also need these three packages inside the customer REST API and they are all available there as well. Now, if you're on the Windows machine and you, uh, you might have to go down instead and just right click and manage the packages for your REST API project to get the same window that I'm just showing you right here. On Rider, you can pick right here what project you wanna work with. So, I'm going to add these three here as well. Add this guy, there we go. Add this guy, here we go, there we go. So now we have all the different packages required to start working with SQLite instead of the in-memory database. Now we're going to keep the SQL one still because we're going to get back to that and start using that again later on when we wanna to go to Azure. Just not the in-memory one. So how do we actually start using this guy? Well, it's very simple. So if we jump back to the guide and just keep scrolling down, we've already done this. This is creating the model right here. We've already done this, but we need to start using the SQLite with some kind of data source. How do we do that? Well, in our code, we have set up so that we dependency inject the guy. So we can do the exact same thing as above, add DB context. There we go. It's going to be a customer app context, just like above. But instead of sending in the options of uh, in-memory database, what we're going to send in is uh, use SQLite. Now the cool thing is because we just added that package, this function or method just popped up. That wasn't there before if you check it out, but that's actually popped up now because we added those packages. So now we have this. Now all we have to explain to it is pretty much the data source, data source. Now I just copied it, so let's just have a look. Data source, you have to put in a space there, remember that, right? Data source. Uh, equals, again, equals, and then the name. So we're going to call this customer app.db. It's just going to be a file that you're going to create right here. Whoops, let's just put in customer app.db. That's the name I wanted. And that's actually all I had to do. Then I'm going to outcome in this. I'll just keep it here so you guys can see the difference, which isn't huge. And now we're actually starting to use, you guessed it, an SQL Lite database instead of an in-memory database. So let's just try and run this now and see what happens if everything is running as we expect. Okay, we get an exception. That was kind of what I expected. So don't worry, don't worry, it's all good. It says an error occurred while updating the database because it can't find the table of customers. Well, that's because we're now working with a real database and a real database, you need to create the database. You need to create some tables. You need to create the setup, right? And we're not doing that with an in-memory database because it's just basic lists behind the scenes. So we need to now create the actual database and 
luckily for us, if we scroll down to the configure, we created this context, we can actually say ensure created. Pretty much just meaning that we want to be sure that uh, on the database, context, database, we want to ensure that the database is actually created. Now there are other ways to do this with migration tools and stuff like that, but let's just keep it simple for now. Let's try and run this again. Now this line right here makes sure that there's actually a database available now when I run this code. <laughs> Look at that, did you see that? When it started, it actually executed a lot of SQL commands right here. So let me just scroll down and show you. Whoops, here's an SQL command for creating a table of customers. Here's an SQL command for creating a table of orders. Well, we need those two tables, so that's perfect. Let's keep going. Here's a command for inserting into customers. ID, blah, 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 right? And if we scroll further down, there's another insert into customers and there's an insert into orders. We have SQL queries that we can read and we can start using. And that means that we can now start being intelligent about our code if it, makes, if it ends up as good SQL queries. And I'll show you in the next lesson one at least that we can improve. So let's just leave this for now. You're now up and running with an SQL database, um, SQLite, sorry, instead of uh, the old in-memory database. That's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.